The Lord be with you. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Herod, the Tetrarch, heard of the reputation of Jesus, and he said to his, ser he said to his servants, This man is John the Baptist. He has been raised from the dead. That is why mighty powers are at work in him. Now Herod had arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, the wife of his brother Philip. For John had said to him, It is not lawful for you to have her. Although he wanted to kill him, he feared the people for they regarded him as a prophet. But as a birthday celebration for Herod, the daughter of Herodias performed this dance before the guests and delighted Herod so much that he swore to give her whatever she might ask for. Prompted by her mother, she said, Give me the platter on the head of John the Baptist. The king was distressed, but because of his oath and the guests who were present, he ordered that he had be given, and he handed John, and he handed him over to be beheaded in prison. His head was brought in on a platter and given to the girl, who took it to her mother. His disciples came and took away the corpse and buried him, and they went away and told Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be the Lord. We may we may wonder what this passage from the Gospel, telling the story of the beheading of John the Baptist, has to do with our Blessed Mother. Actually, it has quite a bit to do with Mary, if we uh, look at both the scripture and the history of the time. We know, of course, the story of uh, Mary visiting Elizabeth when Elizabeth was pregnant with John the Baptist, and the encounter between Mary and Elizabeth, and therefore the encounter between the two infants, Jesus and John the Baptist, in the womb as being a moment of very significant grace. We know the story of the flight into Egypt because the King Herod, King Herod the Great, uh, who was very soon to die, uh, wanted to uh, slaughter this rival king that he had heard about from the Magi. And so they had to flee into Egypt until Herod died. Now, they did not go back to Jerusalem. They went up to Nazareth. And Nazareth was ruled after that time by one of Herod's sons, Herod Antipas. Now, Herod Antipas was not perhaps quite as violently ruthless as his father. But he was a great builder, and he built two cities that appear in the Gospel. Well, one of them appears in the Gospel. That was Tiberias, at the shore of the Sea of Galilee, a few miles south of Capernaum. So Jesus was very familiar with that city that, uh, Herod, that Herod Antipas had built. He named it after the... Um, the emperor of Tiberius. But the other city was only six kilometers, only about three miles from Nazareth. It was called Sephorus. And it was while Jesus was growing up and a young man that that city was being built. Joseph was a carpenter. The word in Greek which is tecton, the word in Greek means 
a construction worker, anybody who works with building material. So not just wood. We sometimes fantasize Joseph having a little workshop, you know, where he built chairs and tables and that sort of thing. Probably he built houses, and he was probably uh, one of the contract laborers, because many laborers were needed, when Sephorus was being built. As Jesus grew up, Jesus himself probably had the experience of working as a contract worker on this splendid city that Herod was building. So, the point of all of this is that Jesus was very familiar with the way that the wealthy people of his day lived and he was very familiar from his own experience with how they uh, exploited the labor of the poor. Because Joseph and Jesus would have been among those who were for a very, very low subsistence wage being employed to build this magnificent city. It's, uh, it's almost unimaginable that Jesus would, Joseph and Jesus would not have been involved in that building of the city because it was only an hour's walk. You know, it was less of, a, less of a commute for them to go to this city from their home than it is a commute for most of the people who work in Los Angeles. So only an hour away, work all day, come back home, get some sleep, go back and work. And that was very possibly a major part of the life of Jesus, and therefore of Mary and Joseph, at the time he was growing up. So Mary was very familiar with the uh, rule of Herod Antipas. And when John the Baptist was arrested and came to Herod's attention, and then this story about his beheading, uh, that would have hit very close to the sorrowful heart of Mary because what was happening to John the Baptist, she didn't have to have a divine revelation to tell her that that was probably something like that was going to be the fate of her son because her son Jesus was of course following, beginning to follow in the footsteps of John the Baptist. And so the same thing, the same kind of rejection, the same kind of persecution, the same kind of death, in fact, the most agonizing death possible, death by crucifixion, she was pretty well aware also awaited her son. So this event of John the Baptist's beheading would have hit home with Mary. It would have touched very close to her heart because she was aware of what was awaiting her son in just another year or two uh, at the hands of the Romans. So uh, we have, uh, if we connect the dots in history, there are a lot of insights that we can get uh, regarding the life of Mary and the life of Jesus. One last thing. The feast that we're celebrating today, the dedication of St. Mary Major in Rome, that's the oldest church dedicated to Mary in the West. In the East, there was already a church in Ephesus, where they held the Council of Ephesus in 431, uh, which declared Mary to be the mother of God. It was in 432, the next year, that the Pope decided to build this basilica in honor of Mary in Rome. So we've got the, the connection here is our understanding of Mary as the mother of God. Uh, that in being the mother of Jesus, she was the mother of the whole Christ, the whole Jesus, which meant she gave birth to him in his divinity as well. And if she's the mother of the whole Christ, she is our mother as well. So what it all boils down to is if she's the mother of Jesus, she's the mother of the whole Jesus, 
And that means Jesus as God, but that also means us as members of his body. And it's for that reason that we continue to have confidence in her maternal love and care for us.